So this is a bit of an unusual video and certainly not one that I was expecting to make. Today, I'm gonna show you how a broken space bar on a butterfly keyboard ended up getting me a free 16 inch MacBook Pro. This video is sponsored by Dashlane, the password and information manager that makes the internet a simple one-click experience. Check out Dashlane with the link below or stay tuned later in the video to learn more. This is actually the second time, if you could believe it, that I've gotten a free MacBook Pro. In fact, the first one that I got is right here. It's this guy. Now, if you're familiar with the channel and you've seen my videos, you've probably seen my video on this particular MacBook Pro. All the way back in December 2016 is when I bought what was then the brand new Touch Bar MacBook Pro, and while it was a good machine, it definitely had trouble with the keyboard. And that all came to a head back in July when I was facing my fourth keyboard replacement and I asked to speak to a manager and they were very kind enough to provide me with this device as a replacement. It's a 2019 15 inch with the 2.4 gigahertz i9, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and Radeon Pro 560X. Back in October, right before the 16 inch MacBook Pro came out, I actually bought the least expensive 2018 Vega 20 MacBook Pro that I could find. I paid $2,400. Now, shortly after I made the video, in early December, I would say, the keyboard started to have some issues. I was using that machine pretty frequently and the space bar was double typing. So I didn't have any issues on that machine with keys getting stuck but what would happen is when you'd press the space bar, it would put in two spaces. So that was definitely frustrating and irritating. And eventually, about a week ago, I decided, okay, I'm just gonna go in and get the keyboard replaced. I've done it so many times in the past, and every single time it goes pretty much the same way. Step one, you bring your computer into the Apple store and you tell them, hey, my keyboard is not functioning as intended. And pretty much 100% of the time, at least, since the keyboard program came out, they don't even check. They won't even test the keys or ask you which keys are broken. They'll just be like, okay, let's put it in a bag. And it gets overnighted to the repair facility, and then it gets overnighted back, and they either ship it to the Apple store where you can pick it up, or they ship it to your house. But this time, it was different. I went in on Friday, January 3rd, having made an appointment with this keyboard with the broken spacebar or malfunctioning spacebar. I just said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace this keyboard in store. Now I knew that this was a feature that they rolled out a couple of weeks ago, months? But what was weird was they said, now we don't have the part in stock currently, so we'll send you an email and then you can bring it back in. Why would you choose to do an in-store replacement if you don't have the part. On Monday, January 6th, I got an email from Apple saying, hey, your part is here, bring your computer in. So I brought it in pretty much immediately, and they said, okay, great, we've got the part, here's your computer, we're gonna take it away, you can pick it up on Friday. Well, now, wait a minute. So the whole point of this in-store repair thing was supposed to be that it's quicker and easier than mailing your computer out all the time and yet they're gonna take five full days to do this repair in store when it would be done in three round trip to mail it out, kinda weird. And then there was another complication, which is what really puts a spin on this story. This was not my normal Apple store in Washington DC. I was all the way back up in Philadelphia. So I said, uh, I'm traveling on Friday. I'm getting out of here. I need my computer before then. So the repair technician said, okay, that's fine. We'll bump it up to Thursday. You can pick it up on Thursday. So now we're gonna flash forward to Thursday, January 9th. So I get a call at 3.20 p.m. Hey, your MacBook Pro is ready. You can come pick it up. Fantastic. I go in, repair tech comes out. He says, we didn't mean to call you. We were still running the diagnostics and it wasn't finishing one of the tests, but we called you preemptively. So it's still not running the test. We're gonna try one more thing and then we'll be back to you. Can you wait another 20 minutes? Okay, at this point, I'm just along for the ride. Let's see what happens here. 20 minutes later, he comes back out. He goes, okay, here's the deal. Your computer is not turning on. Okay, now this is getting interesting. So apparently what had happened was earlier that afternoon, they had done the top case replacement and were running the diagnostic tests. They got through most of the tests. They were sure it was gonna pass, gave me a call, and 
then it wasn't passing that last test. And then lo and behold, as I was standing there in the store waiting to pick it up, the computer dies. It's not turning on anymore. He comes back out, he says, okay, here's the deal. We think your computer is broken. We're gonna do a logic board replacement and we're gonna be able to do that by your deadline of tomorrow at noon, which is the time that I gave them that I was leaving. So we're gonna replace the logic board. You're gonna have a new top case and a new logic board. Come back tomorrow at 11. We've got the part in stock. We're gonna do the repair right now. Everything's gonna be fine. Now at this point, something occurred to me that was a little bit weird. He said, that they had the logic board in stock. Now keep in mind, the specs of this computer were, it was the higher end 2018 with the Vega 20 graphics. So the Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, half terabyte SSD, Vega 20 graphics. So wait a minute, I had to wait three, four days to get the top case, just a standard 2018 top case. And yet you have a Vega 20 logic board just sitting in the back. So now we're at Friday, January 10th. I go back into the Apple store, surprise, surprise, they still haven't fixed the computer. And the repair tech comes out and he goes, so it turns out we actually didn't have your logic board because we don't have that specific configuration, as I suspected. So at this point, we're running out of time. I'm going back to DC soon, they don't have the part, and the computer is completely disassembled, it's not powering on, it is a non-functional brick. So he says, we know that you have to leave, don't worry about it, we're gonna get this resolved for you, we're gonna try to revive the logic board, and if that doesn't work, we have the paperwork signed and ready to go for a device replacement, and we'll just give you a new computer and you can be on your way. That's the point where we were. So I waited another 20 minutes, and then lo and behold, he walks out with this, a brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Unsurprisingly, they were not able to revive the dead logic board that they apparently killed on my 2018 MacBook Pro. Rest in peace, it is now perished. That was a dramatic reenactment, by the way, that's a, not the computer, but you get the idea. And so this is where we are now. A brand new, you can see this thing is still wrapped. I didn't even take the plastic off. I didn't even take it out of the bag until just now that this very second. And you can see we've even got all of these well, documentations, a lot of people think that I make these videos up, which I don't know why I would. It doesn't profit me to spend $2,800 on a computer for a video like this. Honestly, I'm so flabbergasted. So why don't we go ahead and I guess we'll unbox this. The way that they handle device replacement, obviously it's a case by case basis, but generally what they try to do is replace a functional equivalent computer. So this computer has the 2.3 gigahertz Core i9, 16 gigs of RAM, AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of VRAM and the one terabyte SSD. Now, what's, what's different about this, when someone bought that computer in 2018, they paid $3,150, I'm pretty sure, something like that. Whereas this computer retails now for $2,800. So technically, you could make the argument that this was a downgrade in terms of original purchase price. I don't buy that because this is a 16 inch, so it's got a better keyboard, better display, better graphics, more storage, better everything, okay? This thing is better. So let's find out just how good of an upgrade this was. I'm gonna set this computer up and let's run some benchmarks. And then I'm gonna talk about some key tips and takeaways. Obviously this was a very unusual circumstance, but there are some things that are worth keeping in mind if you, perhaps realistically, would like a free MacBook Pro. But first, let's talk about Dashlane, today's video sponsor. Dashlane makes it easy to store and create passwords, as well as credit card, driver's license, and other personal information in a safe and secure way. Dashlane now has two tiers, free and premium. With the free version, you can install Dashlane on one device, allowing you to generate and store passwords with a simple one-click interface. If you choose premium, on the other hand, you'll be able to install Dashlane on as many devices as you want, including a free 16-inch MacBook Pro, and gain access to more premium features. Check out Dashlane with the link in the description below and get a 30-day free trial with no credit card and no obligation required to sign up. Okay, so how does this MacBook Pro stack up against the 2018 MacBook Pro that I traded it for? 
Well, if we take a look at Geekbench multi-core, the 2018 was scoring pretty regularly about 22,000 in Geekbench 4. The Core i9 here is absolutely decimating it, scoring almost 30,000 pretty regularly. So absolutely smoking it. And if we go over to Cinebench R20, we see much of the same. The 16 inch blows it out of the water, scoring 3,300. That's crazy. It's a huge improvement. But interestingly enough, it's also a pretty noticeable improvement on the graphics side. Previously, you had to pay $350 to get those Vega 20 graphics. So let's see how they compare to the included standard graphics now. So let's take a look at Unigen Heaven. On the extreme preset, the Vega 20 was getting 1,007 points, whereas the 5500M gets 1,321. And if we look over in Unigen Valley as well, we're looking at 1,398 on the Vega 20 and a whopping 1,956 on the 5500M. So at this point, let's talk about key takeaways from this because obviously when you go in with a keyboard replacement with a broken spacebar you don't expect to walk out a week later with a brand new macbook pro for free and it's definitely not a common situation remember in order for this to happen the genius bar broke my computer they destroyed the logic board but there are three things that i think are very important that led to this situation number one the most important one is using BTO models. Now I'm a big fan of customized MacBook Pros. I have a custom 16 inch that uses some non-standard configurations and I like them because it suits the computer more to me and what I want to do with it. However, there's another thing that using a customized computer does and that is essentially guarantees that they won't have parts for you. <laughs> Now, that's a weird thing to think about because, you know, if you want good service, you'd want them to have the parts so they could do it quickly. But in this case, when they messed up with the Vega 20, the fact that it was a Vega 20 basically is the reason why I got this MacBook Pro. If I had had one of the standard configurations, they would have had a board in the back and they would have just swapped it out and I may not even have known that they had done that. The second thing that I think helps a lot is going to the store in person. Which sucks because a lot of people don't have access to an Apple store. But if you do, I highly recommend that you go there because having that human connection, being able to talk to someone face to face really helps and it actually speeds things up a lot. And the other thing that helped a lot was the fact that I had a deadline. When I dropped my computer off on Monday, I said, I need this back on Friday. When you do an in-store repair, at least what they told me is they can't mail it to you. Because I had said when they told me that it was going to take a while, I said, okay, I mean, that's fine, I guess. If you want to just mail it to me at the address that I am going to be at, that's fine. And they said, no, they couldn't do that. They're not allowed to mail it out to you. So that was part of the reason. They knew that by Friday, this issue had to be resolved at all costs. And that's why they were so quick, quote unquote, to authorize a full replacement unit. So. That's how I ended up with a free 16 inch MacBook Pro. A very weird situation, no doubt, but definitely not one that I'm going to complain about. So that'll do it for this video. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider following me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Don't forget to join my subreddit, which is linked down below. And as usual, I'll see you guys in the next video.